Hey everybody. We have here a piece of crocagator conifer. Translated back from Lisa speak, this is alligator juniper. Uh, we spent a couple of weeks down in southeast Arizona uh, doing some birding and general vacationing and I love the bark on this stuff. I generally wouldn't be real excited to turn um, you know, juniper, cedar, they're all kind of pitchy. This piece is just a, a piece of a big branch. I would have rather had a, you know, a, a small chunk of log, but um, I didn't have a saw with me. So the forest service had done some trimming and I just found the biggest piece that I could and brought it home. So it's pretty wet. Um, it's going to crack here a little bit. I've done a couple of pieces here is farting around and, um, the very center of the pith is coming out. So we'll have to see how this goes. Uh, I was going to put it between centers, but I decided I really want this to be a very squat little bird's mouth bowl. And I eyeballed the center because I also don't necessarily mind if it's going to have a little bit of bark left on it someplace else. I'm not sure the bark is really going to stay on, but we're going to hope so. So have space for jaws to sit flush and the hole for my woodworm screw and we will oh you know what i want to switch this guy out put my little curvy guy back in there maybe I think first thing actually I'm going to do is just get this sort of evened up side to side. See what we've got.
the spots of the pith here are actually just like pulling out in weird strands. I've never seen that happen before. I started out with just an awl trying to get a hole poked through and get most of those fibers out, which you can see how long and stringy they are inside the bowl there. Anyway, and then I used a couple of different riffler files to get the rest of it out and just kind of smooth it out. Once I got all of the stringy bits out, I went back over it inside and out just to kind of smooth it out and clean up the edges. Before I fill those holes, I wanted to go ahead and get it sanded up at least a little bit, get it smoothed out, and have less to do when we're finished. And when I'm just doing a little bit of sanding, like, you know, five minutes or so, I don't usually put my Trend Air Shield Pro on. I'll just put on a respirator. And now it's time for your favorite part of the video, what not to do. Uh, I only had on hand just this little kit of 5-Minute Epoxy that I've had for ages. Um, I couldn't even get the thicker stuff out, so I had to stick it in the microwave for about 5 seconds, try and get it a little bit looser. So I got it mixed up, put my mica powder in it, and I've got the inside of the holes taped off with electrical tape because the epoxy doesn't stick to it. But I'm just realizing here that I can't turn the bowl over to do the other ones that are on the bottom because the top would fall out. And then I was going to tape them from the outside and do them from the inside while the top was curing and the one piece of tape was stuck to the other piece. And so I pulled all the tape out and then the epoxy went off and now I'm screwed. So plan B is we're going to just clean up the epoxy that leaked out of there. And I filled it with the Milliput two-part epoxy that you knead together, and it goes in as a solid. It wasn't what I wanted to use on this piece. I really wanted the filler on this one to be complementary um, rather than contrasting. But I wasn't sure if the CA glue and powder that I used on the other one of the little bird's mouth pots was going to work because these holes were bigger. And so I decided to just go ahead and go with the Millipot, which I knew would fill it. I'm just not super crazy about the way that it looks after the fact. I used a carbide tool to get the majority of the Millipot out, and now I'm shear scraping to get a nice surface. I resanded it, and now I'm going over it with a coat of denatured alcohol. Uh, all I'm going to do to the inside is just put some shellac in there. I'm going to use a little thicker cut. I got a three pound cut here, which is the ratio that they use in the zinsers, zinser, you know, those people. The shellac that you buy off the shelf pre mixed is generally a three pound cut, which means there are three pounds of shellac flakes to one gallon of alcohol, denatured alcohol. Um, you know, I'll just use a three pound cut on the outside too. Why not? All right, let's get some sanding paste on here. This is going to require so little finish that I'm just going to go ahead and use the tongue honey finish that's left on my little applicator pad.
which is plenty for what I'm doing here. Right. I'm just going to rub some of this in up here. And I might just rub a little on here. This isn't going to get really buffed off, but that's okay. Just let a little stuff soak in there. Okay. All right. I'm going to let that sit for a while. Go ahead and buff it off and turn off that little tenon. We'll have a funky little crocagator bird's mouth bowl thing. I was hoping to bring home a couple of different kinds of wood. I really wanted to pick up some Osage orange. I just never came across any that was in a size that I could manage to get home next time. see what we can do here. Come on. The bearing in my Laguna Live Center that has the cup on it is kaput and so it's very hot and making all kinds of screechy noises and I have to get that Taken apart and whatever. Figure out what its problem is. I need to make myself a couple more jam chucks. I need a short one that's narrow enough to go into little pots like this. Ah, who needs focus anyway? Now, if I sand it that funky and it is wobbly now because, you know, I kind of had to get around the edges, I've, um, I'll take a piece of like 120 grit paper or something and lay it on my table saw table, which is good and flat. You could do it on the lathe bed too. Yeah, it seems like it's all right. But, you know, go with the grain and just flatten it out so that it'll sit nice and flat. But it seems like it's going to be okay. So that little funky branch spot stuck around, which I'm, I'm glad. I think that's cool. I love this little bit of red right here. Uh, I'm bummed that the, that the pith was so bad that it really had to be taken out and filled. I didn't necessarily want to fill this, but, you know, I kind of have a little owl guy looking here. Well, he has three eyes, but that's okay. And then nothing from that side. We'll see. I don't know. It might crack. Um, so here's the first one that I did. I haven't finished it yet. I took it off the lathe, uh, obviously, eh. but I still have the tenon on so I can finish it. I really do like this little bit there. Um, this is CA glue and mica powder. This is CA glue and mica powder and black aquarium sand and then I got a little thin on the rim here so I added a little bit of the milliput so I'll put this back on the lathe sand that you know sand these spots back out and go ahead and finish it um it can be like a little companion piece at some point but I do like the little bit of gator bark that's left um this didn't turn out quite how I had envisioned uh, if you guys look on Instagram and look up Martin Pavey, actually, I don't know if it's what his Instagram channel is, Martin Pavey Wood Designs. Martin. Anyway, look up Martin Pavey. He does lots of carving things, but he is always getting a hold of, I think he's in Australia, these really amazing old 
fence posts that have, you know, moss and lichen and all kinds of wonderful things on it. And then he will take those, and they're dry, obviously, because they've been out being fence posts their whole lives. Um, he'll take a chunk of that and turn, you know, like this, just the, the neck of something. And it looks really fantastic. I think that probably looks a little bit better than this came out. This is um, a little bit more oblong. And the there's something about the squareness of the ones that he's doing. But, you know, you can see I've still got this just dried up pith going on here but it was it was a good little experiment that can be a little weed pot you know if it cracks it cracks it's not evenly hollowed remotely but um you know whatever i have some i have some shellac leaking out of this spot where it's not happy i can sand that out and i did put some milliput in here because there was a big chunk of that from the inside that came out but I just love this bark. And I love, like, that's got a little bit of lichen on it. So here's my little trio of uh, birdmouth pots. And a little weed pot thing, flower pot, whatever. Put your weed in it. Anyway, alligator juniper. Well, considering what I started with, I'm pretty happy with how these came out. If I'd had a larger diameter piece, I could have split it in half to take the pith out. And then I still would have been able to make the bird's mouth top, but I wouldn't have had to deal with the pith and the holes on the sides. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but you know, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. I saw some of the biggest sycamore trees I have ever seen in my life in the Chiricahua Mountains. It was amazing. We also had a Cody run in front of us on the trail, which was exciting since the dog was like, oh, hello, what's this? Cody's are relative of raccoons, and this is what it looks like when you're not looking at a really far away handheld iPhone video. The beagle, however, thinks maybe he's a fish relative. He sure does like the water considering he's a beagle. The Chiricahua Mountains are absolutely amazing. If you ever have the opportunity to go, do so. Post haste. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'd also appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button for me. Until next time, we all be safe out there.